guys, Mix here, and in today's video we are finally back with the 1980 Honda CB750 build series that we're going to be swapping this engine into the half-scale NASCAR. And before I begin, I would like to apologize for the huge delay in videos. Like, it's been like a week since I've done a, uh, a build episode uh, with this. And that is because you guys may remember that I had to cut off two of the studs uh, in order to get off the head. All the rest of them came out besides those two, and I just could not get it, so I just cut them in half. And because of that, I was down two studs, and upon uh, inspecting the rest of the studs that came out, it turns out that my stud extractor, this tool right here, actually damaged every single, like, thread on every single stud. So I was like, oh, dang it, you know, that's not good. And online, studs for this engine are like 200 bucks, which is absurd. And I almost, almost... Uh, went ahead and ordered that, but I went to a hardware store to see if they had any studs like that at all, but they didn't. But one of the guys recommended, recommended that I go to a motorcycle shop and see if they have any, and they didn't, but they were able to repair uh, the threads on the studs that came out. So that is awesome. It saved me like $375 because it was just 25 bucks to get them all repaired. But I was still down two studs. And I couldn't find places to order them separately or just one or anything. And I wasn't going to order a whole $200 set. Wait, I just said that I saved 300 I saved $175, not $375, on getting these things repaired. So I wasn't going to spend 200 bucks on getting a whole new set when I already had completely usable ones, and all I needed was two. So I ended up going back to the hardware store, uh, figuring out the thread pitch and everything uh, on the OEM studs, and trying to find threaded rod that can go uh, into the engine and uh, fit on the nuts that tighten it, and they are the same exact thread pitch. But everywhere I went, I went to like Ace, True Value, Home Depot, Lowe's, everywhere I went, all their threaded rod was coarse thread, and the threads on this are fine thread. They're 10 by 1.25 uh, thread pitch, and they're fine, mighty fine. But everywhere I went, everything was coarse. So I went online, and I found these, so it's all the right uh, sizes, and it said fine, and I was super nervous as it was coming that I really hope it's fine because this is what has been delaying all of the episodes. So this package really depended on like getting back to my normal upload schedule. There's a hole in the bag. But the threaded rod is the same exact size and everything works perfectly. So now with that whole story out of the way, um, we are back on track with getting this thing back together and getting it onto the half scale NASCAR so we can finally begin today. So here is uh, the original stud and here is the new threaded rod and obviously it is way longer so what I'm going to do is uh, measure how long it needs to be and then I'm going to try and cut it without damaging any of the threads or anything like that. Obviously the ones I'm going to be cutting directly are going to be damaged so I'm just going to cut it a little bit longer than this. So we have some uh, leeway with that, so I can get it threaded on, get it started and everything. And then I'm going to do that with two others. I have an extra one just in case. And then we should cruise it from there. So I just finished up uh, cutting the threaded rod, and I gotta say I'm pretty impressed how it uh, how it did on the with the bench grinder. Came out pretty clean. So here's a uh, closer look at it. I am pretty happy how it came out. Uh, definitely really really clean. One is slightly larger than the other, but I mean I could change that. 
they do need to be a little bit close uh, in size with the original studs because uh, with the nuts that are on there, there's a cap on it, so you you know want to make sure that it goes down far enough to uh, go onto the head and tighten down properly. So I might need to adjust that a little bit, but for now, they are threading on perfect. So right now, I can begin and uh, start preparing the engine to get the head put back on. And last video, uh, a lot of you guys were commenting when I put in the new, well, used pistons uh, and the new piston rings that I didn't, you know, oil it up and everything. And I did use like assembly lube and everything, you can't really see it because it's like kind of clear. But I do agree with you guys. I definitely didn't use that much uh, lubrication when putting them in. So for like the past week or so, I've been letting uh, the cylinders soak in engine oil. And I've been turning the engine over just by hand uh, to get it, you know, everywhere where it needs to be. And it should be completely good by now. So uh, I'm just going to siphon it out real quick. So we got all of that out of there. And when it's time to start, it won't hydro lock. And then once that's done, I might clean down the surface a little bit. I mean, pretty much all of the like major gasket material is off of it um, but I'm sure it just could use a little bit more of a cleaning just so we get a, a good seal and on the back of here it is pretty clean as well so I might just rub it down real quick and uh, just make sure it's totally good slap on the new gasket and then we'll see what we got going from there gasket is all lined up all right we're all lined up now I just need to run the uh, the cam chain through mess with the tensioners and everything and then we should be all good so I just pulled the uh, timing chain all the way up and now the head is nice and flush with the cylinder so that is awesome um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and slide in the studs and what I'm gonna do to tighten them down is just do a double nut with the nuts that I bought here uh, so I can tighten them down all good and then uh, I could put on all of the actual nuts and then over here I actually was able to find this and print it out um, basically like the whole uh, reassembly procedure and it has all of the um, like ways to time it and all of the torque specs and everything like that so this will definitely come in handy because if you guys don't know this is my first time ever like working on an engine like this a dual overhead cam four cylinder engine so this is definitely a really big help so guys let's get started on sliding in those studs Guys, so I'm about halfway done with putting in these studs and it is going very smoothly, but uh, the two studs that I made on my own are a little bit too long like this this one is even even threaded in so that's why it looks like insanely long, but it is a little bit, you know, too long even if it were completely threaded in so I'm going to go ahead and grind it down a little bit more and try and match it up to exactly uh, how big a uh, normal stud is and then we should be good from there. Alrighty, so fast forward a little bit and both of the uh, self-made studs are in and they are a tad bit longer than the other ones, but I just threw on uh, the valve cover to make sure that there weren't any clearance issues and there aren't, uh, so that's perfectly fine, nothing will get in the way of them or anything like that. So now I can begin and uh, put on the rest of them. the absolute craziest thing just happened uh, um so i still have one more stud to put in but as i was taking off the nut uh on this one the top nut fell down into the middle of the engine down into the bottom end i was totally just like <sighs> like that i don't know i thought this whole engine was gonna have to come back apart again but literally i got so lucky i took this magnet and I just put it down there and was searching around like crazy. I didn't find it after a couple tries, but then it just hooked on and I carefully just lured it up. I was able to get it out. So I am so happy that that happened. 
or else I would have been completely screwed. But I'm just gonna put on that last stud real quick. I'm not gonna bother recording, it's just the last one. And then we could begin doing the whole timing process, you know, putting on the cams, uh, you know, tightening down the head and everything like that, so we could wrap this up. So the last stud is now on, and everything is done with that. And now I need to go ahead and torque down uh, all of the head bolts, and I have the order in which they need to be torqued right here, uh, so that's really good. It says only 26 to 29 foot-pounds. I thought it'd be uh, way bigger, because that's practically what's holding the engine down from absolutely just exploding but that's what it calls for so that's what i'm gonna do so let's go ahead and get that step done So the whole entire engine is fastened down uh these are all torqued uh, i have these side bolts all tightened down uh, the oil line is tightened as well so now I just need to time this thing which is the part I've been fearing the most because this is going to be definitely a challenge to uh, to time but the paper does walk through it and what I need to do is move the bike over uh, so I can take off that cover right there because it has uh, marks that I need to line up so it's in correct time so moving this bike over is definitely going to be a bit of a challenge because it is like 520 pounds and the tires are flat so that doesn't help at all but everything is really coming together very nicely I'm, I'm honestly surprised I thought this was going to be uh, way harder. I mean, yeah, I have ran into some struggles here and there, but who doesn't when, you know, working on an engine and everything like that. And also, when I go and uh, attempt to start this thing, I'm probably not going to go ahead and bolt up the whole entire exhaust system, because once I know that this thing uh, does run, I'm just going to be pulling it out and then prepping the NAS cart uh, for this engine, measuring everything, getting a welder and everything like that, fabbing up engine mounts, you know, cutting, adding on, everything we need to do. So let me uh, move the whole bike over and then we can resume working. So I got the bike shifted over um, from here. Now I can finally clean up the mess that this thing has been dropping out of it. But like I was saying before, the uh, cover that, we, that we're gonna be taking off here uh, is right here. Hopefully I don't have issues with these Phillips head. I never have luck with them and they do look pretty rusted. And once I get that cover off, I need to look for the 1.4 uh, T mark and that will be where it gets timed. So I'm just gonna clean this up real quick uh, just so when I'm taking it off I'm not you know gonna be standing on and sitting kneeling whatever in uh, rust and oily paper towels. Okay it's a little better. So back to what I was saying before um, I'm just gonna go straight to using an impact driver just with these because just looking at them already looks like that they're stripping out. Okay, there's one, there's two, okay, and there's three. That's all of them. I'm curious to see if um, anything comes out of this side, whether it be like mouse nest or whatever, or oil. Okay, there isn't. Actually, super clean in here. That's a good sign that the uh, mice didn't make their way down to the bottom end. Wow, super clean. This looks like brand new. Here's a closer look for you guys. There's like not one speck of rust on this thing. That is awesome. So now I need to try and find the 1.4 T sign, I think it was. Yeah, T sign. So I guess I'll just rotate the engine over until I see it. All right, so this might be a little bit challenging for me to turn over the engine and try and find the mark at the same time, but just keep going. I see a mark. I can't really tell what it says. Okay, that says 425. Oh wait, 1.4 T. There it is. So I guess I'll just put that directly upright. So there are the markings in there. Um, I guess I just need to put it directly upright. In here it doesn't really specify where exactly to put it. It just says it needs to align. I'm guessing with that little bolt that's up there and it does so that should be good so now i need to start placing in the cams but uh before i do i'm just gonna wipe them down real quick um just because they probably have some dust and whatever from sitting here so i'll do that quick off camera and then we will begin placing them in so both of the camshafts are now uh nice and wiped down and shining bright they look really really good and then i also went ahead and cleaned uh the camshaft bearing you know mating surface on all of them they are also looking very good so now i can proceed to uh dropping in the camshaft now the only issue i think i'm gonna have is figuring out this whole tensioning system i still do not understand it even with like the papers and everything wherever oh, yeah, right there but if i just read it closely and you know follow the directions i think i'll be able to do it but if i could just get those chains loose enough to where i can get them around the cam 
I don't think I should have an issue at all with, with timing it. So without further ado, let's give this a shot. Actually, before I put on the camshafts, what I want to do real quick is uh, just take some oil and loop up uh, the bearing mating surface just so that when this thing does start cranking over, we got some lubrication up in there to stop any uh, potential damage from happening. All right, so I'm just gonna pull the cam chain out from uh, my little holder, and now time to slide in our first cam, just like that. All right, so I just had to take a minute and just like reread over uh, these papers quick because I was looking at this completely wrong. I kept thinking that this was cylinder one, but this is actually cylinder one. And what I say to do is make sure that the lobes on both cams are facing towards the spark plugs, which this side is. And when I slid this on, I almost forgot to put on uh, the chain that goes across to the other camshaft. So good thing I did that before tightening it all down. And the punch marks that need to line up uh, with the cylinder, I kept looking at um, these bolts, that one right up on top there, and I couldn't get it to line up with the cylinder and make the lobes face like that at the same time, but the punch marks are actually that mark and that mark right there, and they are perfectly lined up uh, with the cylinder surface, so that is good. So right now comes the tricky part, and that is trying to get uh, the big main chain that spins both camshafts onto the big sprocket without turning the engine over and making it out of time and everything like that. So I'm just gonna give this my best shot and wish me luck. So guys, I'm running into a little bit of confusion right now. So as you guys can see, I took back out the cam uh, and that is because I was able to get the tensioner moving, but I still do not know how to make it like loose. Even though it's moving, the chain is a little bit looser, but it is still impossible to get the chain around the gear. So right now I'm kind of stuck. I can't find the answer online anywhere. I don't know why. Um, and the instructions, you know, the owner's manual, it says to pull up on the tensioner and I'm able to pull up on like that little piece right there and it should make it looser, but it is almost impossible to keep it holding there while you're trying to get it onto the gear. Let alone, it's almost impossible just to pull that thing up. So there's gotta be like a clue I'm missing right now cause it shouldn't be this difficult just to get it around the cam gear. So I'm gonna bring it to you guys cause I know a lot of you guys know a lot about engines. So comment down below if you know how to get the chain around the gear way easier than how I'm doing cause I just cannot figure it out. Or if you found it online and there's a link for it, definitely comment that below and I will check that out. So unfortunately, the whole entire engine isn't gonna be able to come together in today's video. As you guys can see, it is pretty late outside and I do need to get this video up for you guys. But I am very happy how much we got done uh, in today's video. So next time we're working on this, I should be finishing up and attempting the first start on it. Um, I mean, I would have to let this thing, even if I got it together tonight, I would have to let you know, all the Loctite and everything I used to settle overnight. And I really want to get this video up for you guys tomorrow. So either way, we really wouldn't be able to start it in today's video. So we're not really missing out on much. But I am 100% going to be pumping out way more videos than I have been for the past like two weeks. Just because those stupid studs was just really holding me up. And now we're all good to go with that. And we are right back on track. But follow my social medias that will be on the outro of this video. Instagram, Snapchat, I use the most. But thanks for watching. Please subscribe, like, comment, tell your friends about the channel.